Iron Hole. When installing crown molding on conventional kitchen cabinets, like the ones I have here, there's usually not a nailing surface for crown molding to go on the face of them. These ones have almost enough room. After I get these boards cut, I'll show you what I'm working with inside the kitchen. Very little room on top of the doors to nail crown molding to. It's very common to have to build blocks or add blocking on top of the cabinets so that you have something to nail your crown molding to. What I'm gonna do is just cut strips of three quarter inch plywood. I'm gonna use in one and a half inch trim head screws to attach it to the top of the face frames and the sides. That's what I'm gonna nail the crown molding to. Hopefully I don't cut my fingers off. I've been wondering how many years can I be cutting on this table saw and keep all my fingers. Got my push sticks ready. I know, safety third. But I'm getting so close to retirement and I have all my digits. Woo, that looks dangerous. Normally you want the big side on the fence side. This is not how you're supposed to cut on a table saw. This is the screw that's going to attach this to the top of the cabinet. I'm going to pre-drill the 1 8 inch drill bit. And when I go to screw this to the top of the cabinet, I will have 6 inches. So, time to measure. Just to make sure this whole situation is going to work. Got my 90 degree angle drill. And we are 5 inches with a little bit of room for the bit. It'll be perfect. We'll just be able to fit this with a bit in here, sunk all the way in, and send these screws into the top. It does have a, a nice self-drilling tip on there so that you won't split the face frames. I want to get these nice and straight so that I'm not blowing out into the cabinet. <laughs> I think we're going to be good just at six inches there and it does grow and shrink as you go around the room so what would be my solution if i didn't have enough room above the cabinet it would be simply to glue this on and clamp this all the way around and come back 24 hours later and nail the crown molding to it
got to be very careful cutting these. You only have so much to work with or else you're stuck ordering more crown for one mistake. You got to have some pre-cut crown molding that's labeled with uh, this one here is outside 45 left. This was outside 45 right. I may do a separate video on this. I'm definitely not an expert. I have to refigure it out. It's a little bit of a mind bender. You put this in to the saw upside down and backwards. You're gonna use the Craig, Craig Death Trap. Little doohickeys go towards the bottom and the smoother cup goes towards the top. You also have to check, recheck your spring angle. Oh, 42. So I'm going to set this dangle hopper to 42 degrees. What I do is I recreate with my test block the actual cut. Okay. Now I got my, my other return. Now I'm going to cut this to length from here over 12 inches, from here over 12 inches. Okay, now that you have to replicate that, it's perfect 90. My protractor with glue. This fast cap wood glue, thick formula. This is the activator. You can't, it's not that strong. You can snap this apart if you mess it up. Hopefully, my thumb's not glued to this. These are inside corners, so I just fucked that up. I may have messed this up. This was an off cut, so it's okay. That's why I started with this one. Inside corners, right? I cut a 22 and a half outside corner. All right, got inside corners cut this time, and I'm on my last shave job. That's how I'm doing. A lot of these is just teensy weensy little little cuts and when I start sliding these ones in I can tweak it a little bit you can't just let her rip it's got to be very precise a little bit of a letter rip so I'll get this 22 and a half inside cut that looks way more normal Cut in there, and then I'll start working that 45, outside 45 in. Get this one done, get that one done, and then it's done. So this piece that I screwed up, it is not a waste. Uh, it's gonna be the return that goes straight to the wall here. So far, I have not wasted any wood. I don't intend to waste any wood, but it's always nice to have some extra. You can be on the very last cut and cut an inside corner instead of an outside corner and then you gotta break into the new piece. Now everything's going uh, fine so far. Um, I'm not taking you in and out, in and out to the saw. Um, 
I have I stopped using that freaking Craig jig. It doesn't uh, doesn't work very good. Uh, I hold this in position. That's it. You freaking put it in there. You draw your lines. You can do it a lot of different ways. Draw lines and still cut it upside down and backwards. Uh, or you can just hold it up in there. And this is such a uh, a small piece and there is such a large bearing surface and it's a good piece of wood. It's not some flimsy piece of MDF. Now you just push this up against the fence and hold the angle and cut it to just like you were cutting baseboard. I don't want to stand on the counter, but I'm going to have to. <laughs> Hopefully it don't break or crack. That's the only way to get around this bit. I'm just working these last two angles, this uh, outside 45 corner, just working that together. This is probably the tightest thing I've seen. Here's a little bit of a tip. When you're cutting this one here, everything is supposed to be like exact, very, very precise. But if you come up a little short on this one, it's not that big of a deal. This whole room's getting painted and caulked in. You can put a tiny little caulk joint right there. And I'm talking like the thickness of a hair, maybe two hairs, not like an eighth of an inch. You don't want to just go whacking through it. So right now, I am maybe a 64th long, maybe a 32nd. So I'm going to take a half a blade off of this, and then this piece will be perfect. And then I'll just double check how this one fits in here. Actually, what I'll do is I will adjust this door all the way up. Well, on this short of a run, it really doesn't matter. But on longer runs, you adjust your doors all the way up, and you can even you can even tape a shim to the top of the door to support your end that you're not working on. Uh, so another little tip is. It's use a longer piece, get a good grip, get it in good position to do your 45, your actual funky angle. And then, this is a 90 back here. So you just put this flat on your saw and you chop it and you bring it in to perfection. Like Woo! Switching nail legs, I'm gonna do a little risky maneuver with some glue. Shorter nail, less chance for it to go cattywampus. I'm going to drop some glue in here and then pop it together. I hope I don't have a blowout. You can watch the blowout happen real time. Am I jinxing myself or what? Oh, that just went so tight right there. Iron hole, boom! Woo! Get all my pencil marks off. And we're done. Well, you might be wondering, what about nail holes? All cabinets come with, well, they should come with a fill stick. Uh, this is basically wax, and you just rub it on there, and then wipe the excess off. I've done this a lot. These are very, very tiny holes. Most people wouldn't see them, uh, but going around and basically just coloring it in with this fill stick. And uh, if you've got a bad joint, there might be a little bit of a shadow that you're not happy with. You hit it with the fill stick, and if it's the right color, it's got to be the right color, and it comes out with it, uh, it just disappears. You can also use a screwdriver to round over the edge if you've got a tiny, tiny little gap. Uh, skip the Craig Crown Pro thing here. Craig Crown Pro. Uh, it just didn't didn't work. I couldn't get the dang thing to make a 90 degree angle. I'd, I'd cut it, I'd glue it up, and it wouldn't go 90. I messed with the spring angle. The spring angle sets this angle. I, I gave it a plus two. I gave it a negative two. I don't know what the heck. Maybe it was my saw. My saw can't cut a 45. I don't know. But um, going back to the old way of just holding it in position and zip, cutting a 45 worked perfect. Here's a little bonus footage as I go around and check all my seams with all different lighting combinations. When I was filming, I had every light on. Now I turn, turn one on, 
I only have one on, going around checking everything. Different lighting makes different things show up. And I want, in all lighting conditions, no gaps. All right, we'll call this double bonus feature. I'm sure someone's gonna ask it if I don't put it in here. But you gotta adjust your cabinet doors. And I am gonna do the scribe. There's very little spots to scribe. It's actually just this cabinet right there that's gonna get scribed. So your cabinet doors go up and down and they can go this way too. Yes. I just remembered as I was about to head out the door, the gash in the floor that's underneath this rug. There still is no answer. Let a phone tag between some middleman that represents Home Depot. I'm not sure. I'm not really a part of it. Not my problem, but I'm going to show it to you. There, you can see the glare. It's a pretty good sized dent right there and right there. I don't see any others. They must have just dropped a corner.